So you have a VC maths exam coming up, whether that's further, methods, or spech, this video is gonna cover how you can best prepare for these exams. So just as a brief overview, this was my study approach for all my maths exams. So first I would do practice exams, then I would review my mistakes and then repeat. So you can see that there's nothing special about this and you might've guessed that most people do some form of practice exams. Some do more, some do less. But the difference in the outcome isn't so much how many exams you do, but rather how effectively do you review your mistakes. So this video is gonna first cover how to do practice exams effectively, and then I'll end with some tips and advice for your final maths exam. So apart from the first one or two practice exams that I did just to get used to the time format, the majority of exams that I did were under the exact exam conditions. But the important part is after each exam, I would review my mistakes and group them into four main categories. Because maths exam revision in a nutshell is just doing lots of questions, identifying our mistakes, and then eliminating them. So let's go through these four main mistakes and how we can avoid them in our final exam. The first type of mistake is what I call mistakes due to skills. And this is when we get a skill-based question wrong. And skill-based questions are basically those that test one technique or one skill such as differentiation, log rules, or trick functions, etc. So when I'm doing a practice exam and I get one of these questions wrong, I like to go back to my textbook and keep practicing this skill. And not until when I get one question right, but rather when I can't get any questions wrong. Because here we want to strengthen one particular skill that we might not have fully mastered. But that's okay for these skill-based questions because repetition done with focus is always your best solution. Next are mistakes due to carelessness. So silly mistakes. And this is where you may have overlooked something simple when you were doing a question. And the short way to fix these is to write down all your silly mistakes on a page in your notebook, regardless of how dumb they may seem. And this formed the final page for my bound reference. And this way you can easily see trends in the mistakes that you're making. For example, for me, I would always not answer all parts of the question, sometimes forget units or decimal places. And this is why I came up with the acronym AUD to remind me of these three things which I would say to myself every time I did a question to make sure I don't make these same mistakes. But the longer and more effective way in dealing with silly mistakes is to pay as close to 100% attention as you can. Because silly mistakes can be often traced back to a lack of attention. And for me, when I was thinking about other things like how many people liked my Instagram post or what to do during the holidays, it was easy to make mistakes here and there. And of course, this is easier said than done. So what I did was I would take a couple of deep breaths and viewed my focus as a spotlight. So I would shine that spotlight on exactly what I was doing at the moment and not worry about anything that wasn't in the spotlight. And for me, this was a more effective way in dealing with silly mistakes. Mistakes due to time. And of course the most practical solution is to do more practice exams under time conditions. But a psychological solution is to realize that you don't have to get every single question correct. And that might sound uncomfortable because of something known as loss aversion. Basically the idea that we don't like losing anything. And of course this varies with your own goals. If you're aiming for a raw 30 in methods, that's about a 45 to 55% mark on your final exam, but it depends a bit on your SAC scores. And even if you're aiming for a raw 50, my friend got that and still lost three marks. So the basic idea is of course aim high, but at the same time, don't be held back by loss aversion because this also ended up doing more harm than good in my experience. So when I did my SPECH 3-4 exam, I tried to perfect the responses to all my questions. And what happened was I got stuck on these one or two questions that were extremely hard, and I ended up getting them wrong anyways. But what's worse was I could have spent that time reviewing my other questions, where I made a lot of mistakes that could have been avoided if I just reviewed them a second time. So my recommendation is to not be afraid to skip or guess the answer to a question because we want to keep that momentum going forward and then go back to these hard questions if we have time. Finally, mistakes due to understanding. This is where we get a question wrong where we don't see the connections between different concepts and this is common in application styled questions. And in my opinion, this was definitely one of the harder mistakes to fix, but definitely not impossible. So here are some tips to help you with these application styled questions. So these questions often rely on fundamental concepts. So make sure to write down any key formulas that you need. Also, plan out your response on a scrap piece of paper. Write down any thoughts or approaches that may work. Sometimes the key to getting one of these questions done is to just start with a basic idea and see if you can think of anything from there. Analyze each section of the question. 
Sometimes it's just useless background information, but other times you can convert it into a mass concept. For example, if it says rate or maximum point, it might be talking about derivatives. Next, look at the entire question. So don't just look at part C, look at parts A and B, since each part is often interrelated and can give you insights about how to answer the following parts. And also, if you don't know how to do part A, you can make up an answer for that, and then in part B, just use up that made up answer. In most cases, you'll get consequential for part B and the following parts. So after you have finished these questions, it's time to review them. So for official VCAR questions, you can look at the examiner's report or on websites such as itute.com. And next, I would also write down these hard questions in my notebook somewhere. And essentially, you want to break down these questions into a series of steps that you understand, knowing that the values might change, but the procedure may stay consistent. And look, it is annoying, but it's not enough to just look at the answers and say, oh yeah, I would have wrote that in the actual exam. Because that was me, and what happened was I just ended up making the exact same mistake next time. So I learned the hard way that if you get a question wrong, you need to either redo it or put it in your notes somewhere. So these were the four errors on maths exams that we need to review for effective exam revision. Now to answer some final questions and give some additional tips. How many practice exams did I do? So I did about 40 for methods, 20 tech free and 20 tech active, and about a similar amount for spec. But it really is quality over quantity. So what I would recommend is you definitely do the three most recent VCAR papers. And since these are probably the most valuable, try doing them at the same time that your actual exam is, and also make sure to review them a couple of times as well. What to do during reading time. So for tech free, I felt like there was enough time to look over all the questions, so what I do is I try and find some questions that I would find quite challenging and walk through the process in my head. And then for tech active, an approach that worked well for me was to start by looking at the short answer and extended response. And this is because there's lots of reading involved. And so it's good to use this time to wrap your head around these concepts. And that way, when you get started, you can focus on the calculations rather than understanding where this question fits into the overall picture. What did I include in my bound reference? So the majority of my bound reference was made up of questions or concepts that I found quite challenging. And at the end, I had a page called exam tips. And this basically detailed all the common errors that I made. And I would have this in front of me in my final exam to make sure that I don't make these common mistakes. And also I put last year's official VCAR exam in my bound reference as well. Did I check my answers as I went? So I personally left this to the end because I tried to be as careful as possible the first time through. But if a question had many parts to it, like those application styled questions, I would often check the first couple of parts. That way I'm not carrying any errors for the following sections. What happens if I spend too much time on a question and still don't get it? Beware of the sunk cost fallacy. And this basically means if you spend a lot of time on one question and still don't get it, you're not gonna want to move on because it feels like a waste of time. And this happened to me many times. And the best way to go about this is to prevent it in the first place. So as the old advice goes, do the questions that you find easy first, then go back to the harder ones. What exam scores did I get? So this is for those that are interested, but just know that it does vary from year to year. So don't take it too rigidly. So for methods, I lost six marks across both of my exams and I ended up with a 48. And then for special, I lost 18 marks and ended up with a 43. So that is the video, hope that was helpful. And if you wanna learn more about my general exam approach, then you might like to check out this video here. But that is all, take care.